Hello everyone, welcome again. In this Python tutorial, we are going to learn about some of the built-in functions in Python, which we'll be using very frequently, or they'll be very, very helpful in Python programming and in automation. So uh, understanding some of the built-in functions, how to use them is very important. There are lots of built-in functions. So if you want to get into more details, go ahead and explore the built-in functions, but I'll cover some of the key ones that you will be most frequently be using. All right, so let me copy the functions that I'll be covering in this tutorial and let me create a new Python file and name it as built in functions demo. All right, I'll paste everything here. So these are some of the methods that we'll cover. Okay, so as you can see, these methods or the functions basically are very self explanatory. So you do not need to, you know, basically look around too much, but going through the documentation, what sort of arguments they accept is very important. So if you go to the official uh, website of the Python, so Python documentation, so we'll go to Google and go to, if we go to the documentation, and here go to the library reference and then built-in types now not here so built-in functions so here you will see these are all the built-in functions okay and if you see min max so say for example we want to go through the documentation of the min go to the min function and you'll see what exactly what argument it accepts so uh, iterable and the key default so you can read a lot more detail here and you will get a lot in-depth knowledge about these functions if you go through and read these but prior to that i would recommend that go through the step by step so basics basically so here say for example on this particular screen i'll anyways walk you through the functions and then how to use them okay so say for example this max so in very simple terms it returns the largest item in the iterable okay minimum returns the smallest item in the iterable and iterable can be tuple uh, can be list right so say for example i have a tuple okay so i'll say demo tuple and within this tuple i have some values so say for example five seven eight four five six one okay now if i want to get the max or the maximum item in this iterable so tuple is an iterable uh the maximum item is basically eight in this case right so if i want to get the maximum value out of it i'll use the max function if i want the minimum value i'll use the min function so how can i use it so i can simply say or I, I can say max so we'll use max first and then we just pass the iterable there okay and i'll store this max value that will be returned into a variable so in this case it should be returned it will be stored in x and let's print it now if i run this we should get eight here right if i change it to min the minimum value will be returned so you'll see one will be printed in this case right so this is what max and min functions are all about so very self-explanatory nothing complex in these two functions okay now there is iter function as well so what it does is it returns an iterator object so this function will be used very frequently why because many times in automation we want to get or we want to iterate through the values one by one okay so we will use this function to get the iterator object so that we can iterate over the values one by one okay so now let me remove this or let me just comment it out okay and move it down so now say for example this is the tuple and what iter iterator function will do is it will return the iterator, uh, uh, iterator object so i can store it in say for example i and i'll say iter uh, just not that one so iterator and then i have to pass the iterable there okay so now this i will hold the iterator object and now i can use the next function to iterate through the items one by one okay so i can say print and then use the next function and then i'll say next of i so because this is iterator object so if i'll say next of i it will print the first value here of this tuple right if i'll again say next of i then it will iterate to the next value and print seven okay so it will do something like that so five seven 
and then as you move along it will print each of those values so you'll see first it printed five second it printed seven so that's what this iter function does and then you have this reversed as well so reversed function will return the reversed iterator okay so this is the normal iterator now say for example i want to get the reversed iterator so i can say j and in this j i can say reversed okay and i can pass the iterable which is demo tuple um, this tuple i'll pass now j will hold the reversed iterator so what that means is if you want to print the values or use the next function to print the values then it will start printing from the other side okay so if i say in this case i i printed i now with the reversed one let me print from the other side okay so the the reversed one so let me do this and here as well okay so in this case we will see the difference so you'll see that in the first statement it has printed uh, the first value here because i holds the iterator object which is starts from the um, a zeroth index then the reversed holds the iterator or reversed function returns the iterator from the reverse order and that's why one is printed in this particular case right so with the normal iter function you will get the iterator object from the zeroth index with the reversed you will get the iterator object from the end or the last index okay so from the reverse so as the name suggests so there is nothing complex about it now let me comment these out and i'll move them downwards okay so we have covered reversed we have covered next now slice is also very important so i've covered briefly uh, slice already but i'll briefly cover slice here as well so slice as the name suggests so for example you want to slice something right so you can slice a loaf of bread from start to made or from um, in between you can start and then you can finish somewhere uh, before the end or you can start in between and wherever you want right so slicing is something you know slicing a part of a big object right so in this particular case say for example this is the tuple and i want to slice just three values out of it so i can i can specify i can use the slice function i can specify the start i can specify the end and then i can also specify the step so basically if i want to step so by default step is one uh, but if I want to step the values by two or three, I can specify that step argument as well. Okay. So, say so for example, I want to slice some values out of this tuple. So, what I'll do is I will simply say I'll store this slice. So, I'll say slice. Um, I'll store the sliced part of this tuple into a variable x and I'll say slice. And then in that particular case, I'll say, for example, I want to start from two and then slice. Uh, up to you know five so it, what it will do is this five it uh, is at zeroth index so zero one two it will start from eight and then um so two three and four so it it will slice these three values the last value that you see so it it won't take that into account it starts from two and finishes one less than the value that is specified at end so it will slice eight four and five and now if i print the tuple the the sliced tuple basically right so then let's see what it prints so you can see it has printed eight four and five as we have understood about the slice so we have started and then finished so it has started from second index pick the second third and fourth and not the fifth one right so if you want to step say for example i want to step as well so by default it took one so say for example i want to step by two so what it will do is will start from two and then step so basically it will ignore this value and then step two so it will print five and then uh, in that particular case because now the end is five so next there is no value so it should just print eight and five right so if i run this you will see that only eight and five are printed okay so this is what basically slice function will do it will slice the object it will return the sliced object okay so if you're passing if you if you are having tuple many cases you will be having the lists and you want to slice the list according to the scenarios or the requirements so you this function will be very helpful in that particular case so sorted as the name suggests will return a sorted list so uh, for example here let me comment these out and now this is the tuple right so if i use the sorted function it will sort this tuple and return a list okay so 
so for example i define a variable x and i'll use a method sorted and i'll pass demo tuple to it so what this x will hold is it will the sorted method will return a list which will be stored in variable x and if i'll print x you will see that the this particular tuple is sorted and returns a list so you'll see one four five five six seven eight right so it is sorted now so that's the benefit of using the sorted function sum will sum the items of an iterator now so for example i want to sum the item right or i want to get the total of the items that are in into the um list or tuple right so what this method will do is it will provide me the sum of those items so i can simply say sum let me store it in variable x and i'll say sum and pass the tuple okay so it will add all the values there and return me the sum of it so if i print it then i should get the total of all the values that are there in this particular tuple now it accepts one more argument now say for example i want to start the sum so basically by default if you see the start is zero so say for example i want to add some more values so for example i want to start from five so what this means is that five is already there and from five it will start so it will add all the values and then add five to it so what will happen is 36 plus 5 will be printed so you can see 41 got printed now the last one which is basically input so input will allow user to input a value so this is also very important just for the interview purpose and a general learning purpose so it might be used uh, some some scenarios as well so i'll cover that as well so say for example you want user to prompt a certain value so basically you want uh, a prompt to appear for the user and want him to enter certain value so you can use the input function for that so you can say uh, let me comment this out as well and move all of this down so i can say input and then i can say enter your name okay so what this will do is it will this function will basically prompt the user to input the name okay and then in the next say for example i want to print the name of the user so what i can do is i can store it into the variable x and i can print welcome and then i can say x so if i run this now you'll see it prompted me to enter the name so i'll say my name enter and you will see that it has printed welcome whatever input that you have provided with the input function all right so that's about the input function uh, in python and all other key functions that we have covered so we have covered min max iterator reversed next slice sorted sum and input so these are some of the key methods or a key built-in functions that you will be using apart from that go through the documentation here right so it's very very helpful documentation these are the built-in functions go through these documentation try to learn more and more and practice more and more because basics are fine i'll cover all the basics that you'll need as part of the automation but it's always good to learn once you learn the basic clarify all your basic and then go into the deep concepts or learn more about the python concept do not stop at one particular point so that will help you a lot in acquiring the key skills not only for automation but if you want to say for example switch to some other fields data science and all you will be able to switch it right so that's uh, that's the advantage of keep learning and not stopping with just the basic stuff all right so that's all for this tutorial i hope it was helpful thank you very much for watching